Welcome to part D of the Austin Media Tour. Oh, I'ma be the best. Cody's the best. This made a huge impact on me. Nah, I'ma be the best. If I had to go start from zero dollars again, I would go become a YouTube star. Boardroom is the best event for any software CEO. This is a first. I know you're not just here for break table, so what else are you here for? Uh, well, I've done, I think we're at eight different shows so far. If I get on a plane, it's like back to back. I do five to seven a day. At night, I've been going to the comedy mothership. I'm a big comedy fan. Dan Mark, take one. I think the people that have gone to the lowest places, have the opportunity to go to the highest places. Last night I was giving a keynote and did a Q and A after and they were like, how do you take risk? And I, I was like, can we just pause for a second? They asked a the question. I said, what's the riskiest thing if you make a decision and you're wrong? He's like, well, then I lose my business. And I said, well, what's the worst part about that? He goes, then I can't pay my rent. Is that true? So it's just so fascinating to me that I think people don't understand, and this is why I do a lot of work with that risk youth, is yeah. those people that have gone through those challenging times are actually the most equipped mm. to go create in the world. And I think people forget that they've always gotten through it. I always like remind people, is there ever a moment where you didn't figure it out? No, exactly, because you're here and we're talking and we wouldn't even be talking if you didn't figure it out. This is beautiful, dude. Oh, thank you. That was a beautiful that balance. Was so good. Sometimes I go one side or the other, mm. two business, two not. I even told Sam, like, I was like, I want to have those kind of conversations. Dan, Mark, take one. I want to come to our next section. It is basically, I'll show you a video and then I want you to just comment on it. Do it for This is fun. Yeah. All right, I'm watching it. What we found was the unicorns, the one percenters, the best of the best, are almost obsessed with getting back to people as quickly and intentionally as they can. And then by contrast, and this is true of all 12 of habits, it, they're just almost bent toward doing that, responding. Most everybody else ain't. What we found- Man, was I had an immediate bullshit and then Again, I got curious, and then my response is, he's right, and I'll tell you why. If I think of my life, because I know where I'm going, I can say yes or no incredibly quick. And David Allen talked about this in his book, Getting Things Done, where he said, when you open up an email or any task, give yourself two minutes to make a decision on the next action. Not how to get it done, but what are you gonna do with it? So in that context, I agree. All right, thank you so much, Dan, for taking the time. Appreciate you. Talking to you. Honor. Here we go. All right. That's a fun segment. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I've never had anybody do that. That was a very creative original idea. Why am I so, that's just proof, like normally. This is different. What, what, normally right I'm like, can do it with my eyes closed. Oh, it actually almost opened up on us. Let's not do that. Come on, I want to move these up. Yeah, I want the big dogs. The other one. Then we, everybody needs to know the big dogs in town. Okay, Adamo, look at what you just did and ask yourself if that's balanced. Please, can you take some? No, you gotta. Boardroom is one of the best groups and events for any software CEO that's about, you know, three to five million in annual recurring revenue that wants to scale to 15 plus. And not only are the entrepreneurs that are in it awesome, the speakers we bring in, billion dollar founders of the top software companies like HubSpot, Twilio, Dropbox, et cetera. Boardroom is the cream of the crop mastermind when it comes to software CEOs. You know what's crazy? The people that I get to tap on the shoulder and ask to come bless all of us to share their genius 
are people that I've met over the years in rooms no different than this. So I just want you to know, you may be sitting next to the person, could be the person that you need to call when your life's falling apart. I didn't know when I first met them. I just knew their name. Turns out they're really good at this area of your life. Team effort, yeah! Literally, that is why I love this thing. Master Trump. Yes, right. <laughs> what are we doing? Hi, everyone. My name is Trump Park. I'm um, <laughs> um, also known as Grandmaster Park. I'm a seventh degree Taekwondo black belt. I've been studying martial arts for 52 years. Anyway, I wanted to take this opportunity and give Mr. Dan Martell one of the highest honors in martial arts. So I wanted to present him on behalf of our federation, an honorary, you know, black belt. I'm gonna put the black belt around you. Whoa, 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 whoa. You have to earn it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you have to break this board with Dude. your face. I mean, <laughs> All right, let's just put it up for Dan. Are we doing this right now? <laughs> I'm going right to your chest, bro. Right Two, three. Why did you pre-cut it or something? <laughs> Give me a hug, man. Oh. Dude, you guys are To a awesome. true leader, impacting martial arts. Because indirectly, he's helping us make a better impact on our industry. And I wanted to pass that honor to Dan Martell for making that impact. All right, they knew what I'm down. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm okay. Where are we going? We're gonna go do a podcast. So you have a list, your top one right now is marketing. Then my question to you is, is show me in your calendar where you've taught your team how to market. I already know the answer, Brian. All big companies do this. McDonald's has McDonald's University. The IBM way, the Dropbox way, the Shopify way, they have, Shopify has internal executive coaching in their people team to develop their top talent. They believe in it so much, they put real dollars behind developing their people. But most CEOs do not actually have time in their calendar to train their people. Mm. And the coaches, you guys are the worst. Because I look at your calendar and you got 25 hours in your calendar of coaching your clients. Where are you coaching your team? The same thing you're doing for your clients, do it for your team and watch them thrive. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on and this has been great. Appreciate it, Brian. Cool. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Brian's got a lot of energy. He's got that young, aggressive, driven, go fucking go-getter energy. This is, if you're watching this and you know Brian, and Brian, if you're watching this, I want you to know, this is literally my only piece of advice for everybody at that stage, is find a way to do it sustainably. Compound growth only happens if you don't have to reset every three, five, seven years. If you don't find a way to be sustainable, you literally will always be just giving it all back. This is the fun part for me, and I can't wait to see him. Philip, you're walking into the f***ing conversations of conversations. I miss you. Good? So good. It's been a while since the, yeah, yeah. the Jason trip. And I was telling them, I was like, I can't wait for you to talk to Philip because I feel like you know this. You, this is your giftedness. I saw it today. We let him know talk to Roy York. And this guy looks at me. And had all the heady questions. And I remember looking at him, or I don't remember the precise words. and. I think you said something along the lines of, but I read this one, this, and I said, what part of you thinks I give a about you? Correct me if I'm wrong. That's exactly what you said. I said, it's about a ripple effect that you can create. And as soon as I said that, most people go, yeah, yeah. The second I said that, he just got it. He just went, you and I got on a call, and he says, when's your next event? And I said, just Peru, but I mean, the next one that's available. He goes, when's Peru? And I said, it's two weeks. I mean, <laughs> this guy's nuts. Give and Grow was designed essentially to get people out of their heads. So how do you do that? So you go to a developing country, you uh, work with street kids and orphans. Um, so we went to a few projects and it kind of just humbles you and drops you to your knees, so to speak, in the nicest possible way. Then we went hiking in nature. So we spent a couple of days, two or three days, hiking through the mountains. Um, 
And then at the very end, you retreat and you retreat back into a retreat center and you just kind of let everything land and process, allowing stuff to, to come up and then create a space for allow it to, to name it. You turned into such a goof. Oh, that's when I started allowing that part of me. The fun, the guy. That I forgot that was in Peru. It took him three days to land. Control. Trying to force it, trying to make it happen. I would just describe his little kid showed up. And I went, okay, I love that guy. I want more of him. Today we've got day two of SAS boardroom. I've got my buddy KD, who's, he's built literally two billion dollar SAS companies revenue wise. We've got Austin as our playground for the experience. So let's go. Let's go, take your seats, take your seats. Leaders create leaders. You wanna know how I know if you're a good leader? Show me your team. You wanna know how you can tell those internet fucking fake gurus? Show me your team. This guy has built some serious fucking leaders. Can we give a big round of applause to my good buddy, KD? Let's rock, y'all. So first things first, I have bad news. You cannot change results. Where do results live, past, present, or future? So you can't change them. That's quite literally what makes it a result, is it is already done. But too often as leaders, we use very results-based language with our team. So when we are trying to scale our team, you can't change a result without changing a metric. You know where results live on my orgs? A dashboard. I can see the results. We actually don't talk about results on our orgs. We first focus on the metrics. About Jason and I have known each other over a decade. What's cool is he's really shaped the narrative of software. A lot of you guys have read his articles, A Smart Bear, yeah, so this was a conversation about really leading people and, and, and having people, a cohesive set of people at the company. And so the idea is that everybody should be able to answer these questions, yes. Write them down, people. Am I having fun? Am I growing? Does my manager have my back? Do I have a plan for the future? Mm. Let me give you an interesting puzzle that I ask every manager I ever interview. Um, let's say you have a, uh, an employee, they're fine at, let's say, writing code, and they're a good culture fit. Not great, not wonderful, not best person on the team, but not bad, no complaints. Now, two years later, they're exactly the same. Nothing's changed. Is that a problem? Now, of course, there's no right answer necessarily, although I would challenge you to say, at your company, there probably does need to be an answer. Either we're a company of nurturers and, gr and growers of people and everything, so the answer might be yes, but you could decide it's not okay. We're a company of growth, of learning, of talent, and that, that doesn't mean everything's good, but it does mean something has to be improving, at least over a time scale of like two years. There's no one right answer, let's say, but there is an answer. So guys, give a big round of applause for Jason Cohen. <laughs> talked a lot about legacy yesterday. After you leave this earth, what is the legacy you want to leave behind? You guys, you're not gonna, you're not gonna like my answer. There's no legacy. The only thing I try to do every day is to be absolutely present here and now and express myself at the highest level. For me, legacy isn't something that I need. There's no thing that you need to achieve for you to finally get to a place where you have enough. But it doesn't change the fact that if people want to go on the journey that there are tools to do that. It's like, can you get to a place where you live in enoughness and nothing and I don't need anything more, and, but at the same time be aware that there is more for you to become. You were put here to become, the seed ends up becoming a plant. So if I'm gonna go on a journey, then it's just about like, give yourself permission to express the thing that you like, you know? Brad sold his company, he's gonna buy a new, beautiful new car. My only advice to him was, get the one you want. Get the color you want. That is actually the thing, is like honoring your preferences. Create from a place of creativity, not competition. We're at Cody Sanchez's new HQ, Contrarian HQ, and we're about to do a Q&A, and we're gonna share with the people how to buy boring businesses, hopefully scale these companies, and maybe she'll ask me about buying back my time. Hey, how are you? Hey, you. It's so good to 
Thank you. Thank you for doing this. I'm like pumped. I just wanted to hang. I wanted to hang. Lloyd, are you ready to roll? Daryl, when you went and wrote this, what was the one piece of this book that you thought, why doesn't anybody do it this way? It's not what everybody would want to learn. It's kind of the chocolate broccoli. Like people, I wrote that book that way because I knew it would get people to start the book. But the broccoli is actually like towards the back part of it and it's transformational leadership. That when you have people that report to you, okay, there's two ways to do it. You can do transactional leadership or transformational. Most people, if you've never been taught any different, it sounds super logical that you do transactional leadership, which is you hire somebody, you tell them what to do, you check that they got done, and you tell them what to do next. The problem with that is that as you hire more people, and you literally spend the whole day doing a tell, check, next loop, versus transformational, which is number one, it's outcome focus. So I don't tell anybody on my team what to do. I tell them what it looks like when it is done at the highest level. So I focus on outcome, then I go to measure, which is what is the numbers that we're gonna agree upon means you're making progress. And then what I do, the third part is coach, right? And coach is principle, not activity. So I never attack the activity, I talk about the principle. See, and then at the end, this is the third part of the coaching, is you ask them, based on the story I just shared with you, what did you take away from that? So notice I didn't, I didn't tell them anything. I, I, I created a methodology for evolving my people. That's why it's a productivity book, but it's also a leadership book is you build the people, the people build the business. So Cody, here is my question. Uh -huh. You're starting from scratch. How do you make your first million? I would go and become really valuable to the most valuable person I could find. I deliver the most valuable thing that I, because I have inherent knowledge, know, and I deliver that to probably 10 people. Nine of them are gonna say no, and one of them is gonna think that that's really useful and say like, pay me whatever you think this is worth or let me take a cut of whatever you think this is worth. So I'm probably gonna like, bartend, do something on the side. Yes, I could go start from zero, get my first couple thousand dollars and work my way up, or I could leverage Dan's money. Only pay me if this wins and succeeds and it's just net you know, to you and then some net to me on top. Um, that's what I would do. And I also think it's ridiculous. Somebody else asked me this question the other day and their answer was like, I would go become a YouTube star. Like, and if you guys saw the ad revenue on YouTube, you'd be like, no, you wouldn't. So the best thing that you can do is get in proximity to people who already have power and figure out a way to become more valuable to them than anybody else. It is such a great answer. And honestly, I've asked that question a lot of people and nobody's given me that answer. When you can come to somebody and say, hey, I'm gonna take nothing, I'll do all this work, I'm gonna bet on me, and I just, I'll take 10% of the upside, then they have unlimited leverage. Because I have whatever amount of capital. It's like, how many times would you give me a dollar or like, you know, you trade a dollar for 10. It's like, how many times do you want to do that trade? So that's actually a brilliant idea. I think we're at the time, one minute over. All right, everybody give Dan a round of applause. Hey, there you, there you Cody's the best, okay? Let me tell you, she her content's the best. I think she's top five in the world. And when she invited me to stop by the office to deliver some value to her community, and I knew that she had people that were hungry to not only be better people, but actually build businesses, I was like, I'm there. I will see you, thank you. And uh, we had so much fun. She's just such a great host, met some great people, and just really enjoyed my time. You're supposed to do the thing with your hair. Do it. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> this, what a yeah. cool day. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, I woke up next to Sam, because for some reason Sam's sleeping in my bed. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please leave comments below letting us know what you like, what you think we can do better. My goal is to give away everything for free, show you behind the scenes so you can all do it yourself. And I'll see you in the next episode.